Hey everyone, this is Brandon from Top10Giver.com. Today I want to take a look at graphics cards. You know, Battlefield 4 just came out and I'm sure a bunch of people bought it and freaked out that they're not getting the kind of performance that they want out of uh, their graphics cards. So today we're going to take a look at NVIDIA and AMD, compare the two, and give you the best knowledge that we have for the situation that we're currently in. You know, a couple months ago, I took a look at the best Battlefield 4 graphics cards with money. People were preparing for the game even back then and trying to get a good idea of, of what graphics cards to purchase. So the best thing that I could do was take a look at Battlefield 3 benchmarks. And I just want to say today that Battlefield 3 benchmarks are still not a terrible thing to use for when it comes to Battlefield 4. Why? Because those drivers are pretty finalized and, and drivers can make a pretty big difference. So if you want a pretty good reference um, for Battlefield 4 and you've got to know right now, then that's a pretty good way to do it. Now, of course, we're going to be having more benchmarks come out for Battlefield 4 in the, in the next couple of months and we're going to learn a lot more. But again, the drivers aren't finalized and that's a huge deal. NVIDIA just released the uh, 331.65 drivers with the shadow play, you guys can try that out. And a lot of people are saying that they got a 12% boost uh, just by, uh, by going to the new drivers and their overall FPS. So that's really a huge boost when you think about it and things will change a lot for, uh, for the first little while when we talk about a newer game like Battlefield 4. Speaking of shadow play, that's a cool new feature that, uh, that's a free feature that allows the gamers to record video on the fly. You guys can check it out. Uh, NVIDIA's thrown in stuff like this. They've also got a brand new technology called G-Sync that's coming out that is supposed to be a complete game changer. You know, I wasn't there when they unveiled it, but I've watched enough documentation on this that G-Sync is just going to be a huge deal. It's going to pretty much eliminate all the tearing issues that we have and should allow gaming to just be a much more fluid experience. I think Linus on Linus Tech Tips, he said something like he'd rather play 50 FPS with G-Sync than 80 FPS without. So it's that much of a game changer, some huge things coming out. And you know, when we're talking about that though, we've, we've obviously got monitor, um, we, we've got to find monitors that are um, suited for this type of technology. So in my opinion, we're not super close to, to being able to use G-Sync maybe sometime mid, late next year. I'm not really sure exactly when this is all gonna get implemented, but if we've all gotta purchase new monitors, then that's something to think about too when you're purchasing your graphics card is that uh, if you're just so heavily set on G-Sync, remember that you may not have a monitor that's really compatible with using that. So everybody's really hot on G-Sync right now and, there, and then and that's, that comes from the, um, the NVIDIA side and on the AMD side, we of course have Mantle. Everybody's, you know, all the fanboys for, for AMD are saying, hey, this is gonna be the biggest game changer in the world and this is gonna make it so that everything's 100% uh, better for AMD and you should no longer consider, you know, uh, an NVIDIA card. This is absolutely not the case. We don't know a lot about Mantle. We don't know the exact performance boost we're going to get. My uh, estimation is that it'll be significant on a game like Battlefield 4. Will it be a complete game changer over the driver changes we're seeing with NVIDIA right now? I don't know. I do know that both companies are going to optimize it, but I think going forward, you have to take a look at we know what we know right now. So what can we do right now? We can look at the benchmarks that we have for Battlefield 3. We can look at the newer benchmarks that we have for Battlefield 4, and we can look at where companies, where the two main companies, where NVIDIA and AMD are pricing their graphics cards. I mean, take a look at the R9290X, right? Uh, it comes out at a price point of $550, and immediately we see huge price drops for the GTX 780 and the 770. I think the 770 is available for like $330 to $350 now. Just huge price drops. So companies like NVIDIA and AMD, they know what they're doing. They know where they belong. And clearly the R9 290X isn't perfect in every scenario. It runs a little hot. It's not a perfect overclocker, but all we've seen is numbers from reference cards right now. So, you know, we're gonna get other cards in the future that, that may run even better. And this kind of competition, it's great for people like you and me 
that are willing to consider both an AMD card and an NVIDIA card because we get a better price point. So what kind of card would I get if I was looking at the under $500 category range right now? You know, maybe that's, maybe that's your price point. You know, I'd probably go for a four gigabyte GTX 770. This is if I had to have one right now. Why? Because I don't want the reference R9 290X card. I, I don't want to do that. I, I, I wait for that. So if you can't wait right now, the GTX 770 is a good option. But here's another piece of advice. I, I've not seen every single GTX 770 card drop in price yet. It's not uh, been shown all the way across the market. So it might be a good idea to just wait a couple weeks and you can save yourself hundreds of dollars. If you can stand playing with your, uh, whether you got like a 560 Ti, 575, you know, 580, whatever you've got, uh, in the works that you bought for Battlefield 3, if you can stand using that for just a few more weeks, I think that uh, you stand to save a significant amount of money. Okay, so that's all I got really. Uh, and and Thanksgiving, we got Thanksgiving coming up this next month. And I keep thinking, you know, maybe one thing that I'm grateful is I'm grateful that there are two main manufacturers of graphics cards. Just imagine if, if uh, Nvidia can afford to drop their cards at $100, $200 at a time Imagine what it would be like if there weren't two really good companies competing constantly against each other. Okay, that's all I got for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please help me out by pressing that like and subscribe button. Additional subscribers allows me to take more of the time uh, of my day each day to make videos like this one to write about gaming instead of other products. You know, I, I, my full-time job is as a writer. I write different product reviews and, and things on the internet. and so. Again, the bigger this channel gets, the more I can devote to, to, the, to my passion, with it, which is technology and, and gaming and, and hardware. So uh, again, you can press that like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. And uh, we'll see you next time.